In this screencast, we're going to install and take a look at the encryption module. Typically, the reason you would install the encryption module is because it's required by another module. But we'll take a look at it briefly to see what it does. The basic functionality you get there is the ability to encrypt, which is to encode so it is unreadable by, say, a, a hacker text and it's often used to store passwords and other sensitive information. An example of a module that requires it is the email module, which needs your credentials to log in to uh, a server in order to send email. Um, I have not done a any kind of security audit on this. I did look that the encryption standard that's being used that's being used is still currently considered a strong one. Um, and I know that this is used by Mendix customers with public apps. Um, but the uh, reason you would use this is for security and using it on your own. You might if you needed to do that, but likely this would be part of something else. So you would need to install this anyway. And there is some setup that needs to be done. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing I want to do is go to the App Store. And when I go to the App Store and I go to home of the App Store, um, this is likely to be one of the um, most popular ones. I'm looking here to see if it's there. No, it looks like it is not. So if I go under apps and I type encryption, I noticed that I had another search there, but uh, we'll do encryption. And we see it comes up here. It's created by Mendix. And we'll go ahead and we'll take a quick look at the documentation. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't format that well. You have funny characters. But the point is that there's an encryption key under private string that needs to be set. The reason is that you need to put in some random key that makes your code, your encryption, unreadable by other people. And it really should be something random so that it would be hard for uh, a hacker to um, to decode. Okay, so we'll, we'll see how we do that. And once we do that, we'll be all set. So we go ahead and download, and this is gonna be a new module. And it warns us that an existing file in the project directory will be overwritten. If you look here, this user lib is where various kinds of Mendix code, Java code is stored, and it's gonna overwrite something. You, in general, will be fine with this, but depending on what you install, if you run into a problem, we can always track it down. But this means that, that one module is updating code belonging to another, and it's imported. And now we see encryption, we'll take a look at it. If we open up domain model, which uh, ordinarily you might not even need to do, but we'll see they're, they're giving us an example here of something and various kinds of technical details we won't get into. What uh, you'll see here is they have some documentation. They have a readme that uh, explains uh, some stuff and they have some examples of various kinds of uh, pages and workflows and so forth, okay? So what we'll do here is we need to set this one thing. So you see here where it says private string ende encrypt decrypt. Uh, you see where it says encrypt string. So you don't want to do encryption prefix. That is always the same. If you look at it, it is this is a standard thing to indicate the kind of encryption. Okay, after some searching around, I found that it's actually not at the top level, but hiding under APIs. We have decrypt, encrypt, and then we have encryption key. That's what we want. The little pi there means it's a constant. If we double click, we'll see that it's gotta be exactly 16 characters and it should be random. Now you could just pick a random 16 characters, but, um, or if you have a password generator that does that, you can use it. If you're looking for a way to just get some random, truly random text, you can always go and search for Steve Gibson, GRC, Gibson Research Corpor uh, Corporation, is a um, podcaster who talks a lot about security. Security now is a podcast. And if we type in password and do GRC, we're looking for ultra high security password generator. Okay, so if we go there, it's grc.com slash passwords. And you'll, you'll see he gives you um, a bunch of random characters 
if we uh, refresh this page, you'll see if you watch closely that they change each time. And what we probably want is not just alphanumeric, we want this as strong as possible. So we're gonna do, um, pick out 16 of these. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'll just grab a bunch and count them out later. So this is just random text, uh, uppercase, lowercase, and uh, symbols. So I'm going to copy, and now I'll go back into Mendix. And this is a little overkill, but if you're gonna do random, do random. Okay, so I paste this random text. And now what I need to do is make sure I have exactly 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So up through the 8, I will get rid of the rest. And I will check this, although I'm going to edit this out of the thing. So I'm about to double check that I got the right amount. Okay, so I got the correct number of characters and they're random so that a hacker uh, can't guess them. So putting in all lowercase a's or something would not be a good idea here because this is how uh, effectively your passwords and such will be, will be uh, scrambled. Okay, so we have this key set, which means now that when we go to use encryption, it'll be strong. Let, and, and ordinarily, if you're using this for something else, uh, a required module, you would need to do this step, but at that point you'd be done. But just to show you what this is doing behind the scenes, we'll go ahead and do a demo of it. Again, if you're just trying to get set up, you can stop watching now, but what follows is a quick demo of how someone might use encryption. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our domain model, and but I don't want the one for encryption. I want our domain model. And I'll go into my module demo entity that was set up in the first podcast. I'm going to add two attributes. One will be clear uh, text. So this is just some text that someone might want to type in that's readable. Okay, and then the second attribute will be encrypted text. So we could do a lot with this, but all I'm gonna do is add a button that lets us take clear text and encrypt it, and you'll see how that works. So we'll do okay here. We now want to open up the page, which is the module demo. And in addition to the random password, let's go ahead and add two text boxes. Okay, so we'll add one, and we will add a second one. And now for the first one, double click, and the attribute will be clear text. And the next one will double click, and the attribute will be encrypted text. And what we're gonna do now is add a button, and what that button will do, um, just as our generate password button um, in another screencast updated the random password. This will take whatever's in the clear text and update encrypted text to be an encrypted version of that. Okay, so I'm going to add a button, a call microflow button, put that there. It's going to be a new microflow. I'll call it encryption demo. That's what the microflow is, but I think I will change the text here to encrypt clear, clear text. Okay, and now uh, what we will do is we'll go to our encryption demo microflow. We'll see that we've been passed in information. And now what we wanna do is two things. We wanna run some encryption and you'll see we have an encrypt string action we can use. So we'll drag that in here. And then once we've encrypted the string, we're going to want to change our module demo so it um, actually has the encrypted string shown. Okay, so we double click on this and we see parameters. The first thing is, what is my input value? So the input value here should be the clear text from module demo. So a uh, dollar sign module demo, to look inside that, I do a slash. That's um, how it's done in Mendix. And I'll choose clear text. And so that is gonna be 
uh, the value that comes in. So it took a little looking around, but I'm now ready to show you how to add in the encryption key and the encryption prefix. The thing that I had to remind myself is that if you're trying to look inside a module, you have to put an at sign, and then that's going to show us all the things that could go here. And in this case, we've got, uh, we want to use encryption key. That's the value we set to random string. So we want to use that random string. And then the prefix, if we do an at, we should be able to find the encryption prefix. And that is what we have here. Okay, so th those are um, the values we need to do the encryption. And then the variable we get back, which will contain the encrypted string, we'll uh, call it encrypted text. And now if we go to change, the um, variable with the entity we have is module. We do want to refresh it to show our change. And the thing we want to change is encrypted text. And the thing we want to set it to is encrypted text. So we have one error. Um, and that is the uh, encryption demo microflow needs to be made available. So we go to encryption demo. Uh, actually, we go to security and microflow access and encryption demo make available for everyone who is logged in. So now we are ready to try this. Okay, we'll save our changes. We need to update the database. Again, we're, we're making changes to our data model, so we update it. Now we're ready to view. Log in as the admin. Go to our demo. Generate a password if I want from before. But what we're going to do here is put text in. So if I do, in, if I put no text in and encrypt, I don't get anything. But if I put hello, that's what it is. And and by the way, it does not matter how um, long or short the text is. It's always going to kind of come back. I think the different length has to do with the width of the characters. So this is a demonstration of how the encryption works. Uh, we could also do decryption, um, but uh, right now um, I'm just going to keep it simple and say this is an example of the kind of function you can use.